Well, first off, I'd like to welcome, welcome the people to Eureka, Nevada. And we're a little town that sits at 6,500 feet. Our population is about 600. Uh, we're in, located in the central part of Nevada on the famous uh, Highway 50, which is the loneliest road in America. And we kind of don't think it's quite that lonely. We are, we're known as the friendliest town. And one of the events that we just had was our Show What You Brung car show, and of course the drag races too. But the car show was what we focused on uh, for our town. And anyway, we had 105 entries. Um, I think it was very well received. Everybody, you know you're successful when you see the public with a smile on their face. And they're walking around and they're mingling with people. It's a, it's a real good feeling. But every year we have, uh, that's something we annually do is the car show. We also have other events here in town. We have the 4th of July, which is actually uh, run by the Volunteer Fire Department. We also have the Eureka County Fair. And we have another new event called Western Frontier Days, which will be happening in, in June. So we try to, when you live in a small community, you try to get something going every three months or thereabouts. So it keeps the community involved. It keeps people that are traveling through on Highway 50 um, engaged and they'll come back because it's all about foot traffic, getting people to stay here, getting people to tell other people because the biggest, the best form of advertisement is word of mouth. You know, it's old fashioned, but it's very true. Um, somebody has a good experience, they're gonna tell their family, they're gonna come back. Right now, I'm standing in the Eureka Opera House and the Opera House is rather unique. It was built in the 1880s uh, we use it actually on a daily basis for conventions and meetings. Uh, people have been married here. We've had funerals here. We do a performance once a month here, um, sometimes twice, depending upon uh, the time, the season. We also have to take into consideration the weather. When I first started working here, um, whenever you have an old building that has a lot of history, uh, that pertains to good times and bad times and has, you know, a lot of events have happened here. Um, case in point, and this is very true, downstairs in our meeting room, years and years ago, um, the, up, the upstairs, this upper part of this building was used as a, you know, a meeting uh, community center, the opera house. The lower areas of the building, the basement, so to speak, um, the lower levels, I should say, of the building, were used for a tailor shop, a grocery store, and probably a little general store type of thing. Um, and what had happened, and this is through, actually this is in uh, the Sentinel magazine, or the Sentinel newspaper, so it is, it's documented history. Um, a person had, uh, by the name of Mormon Joe, had gone across the street and it was cold, gathered some coals across the street at the courthouse and brought them back into the opera house. And unfortunately, what happened is it started a fire in the lower level of the building. He was probably trapped and he died of either smoke inhalation, probably smoke inhalation. And when I first started here, um, Patty was showing me around the building and I was downstairs in the basement and I saw an apparition downstairs um, on the landing and it was a gentleman that was dressed in a full turn of the century uh, tailored outfit and I thought it was very strange but it's sort of it's one of those those things where this building it might also be that so many people have performed here so many people have come through through here throughout the years that it sort of has that essence of being a great place. It's a fun place to perform too. And I don't know whether it's the ghost or whether, I don't know. I can't, I can't say that it's been documented by, let's say, a television coming in and saying, oh my goodness, this place is haunted. We're in the hallway at the Opera House. Along my left hand side are photographs of some of the performers that have performed here at the Opera House. A tradition that Wally Cashane started about 18 years ago. 
But really, the great aspect are the signatures on the wall over here. This is actually the access to the backstage. Along this wall, you'll see all kinds of signatures um, that primarily over the years, performers have signed the wall. And right here on the left-hand side, at the right-hand stage pass, is the oldest signature, and that's from 1897. It's from a theater company in San Francisco. And so as I was saying, the signatures go up, up this way. And what we're having our performers do now, actually, is date the wall. Because quite frankly, we're running out of space. But anyhow, the wall is um, really kind of unique and a wonderful thing to have here at the Opera House. This courtroom, this, this courthouse was built in 1879. It still maintains some of the original integrity that it had. The courtroom is our district court here in Eureka County. And as you notice the wonderful woodwork that's along uh, the walls in our pews, and this is actually a wonder really wonderful feature for some of the tourists that are coming through the community to come in and see a working courtroom. It also has up top here in the ceiling is a tin ceiling. So some of, that's some of the wonderful features of old Nevada history that we still maintain in Eureka, Nevada. Because of necessity, uh, the courthouse was expanded upon in the 1980s to house different types of offices uh, for like DMV, assessor, recorder. But one thing that was really neat is they maintained the integrity of the historical aspect of the building. Hi, welcome to uh, the Eureka Sentinel Museum. And I'm sitting out here in front of this building that used to be the newspaper up until 1960. And inside, if you went inside this, this wonderful old stone building, we have a fabulous exhibit, which is actually a printing shop, uh, where the newspapers were printed and stuff. And it smells like old ink, should we say. Um, and it has, the museum has all these wonderful displays. And like any museum, it has a lot to do with the mission statement for the museum is what it, how the historical connection is to the environment, um, to the county. And this place is open to the public. Um, we get a lot of tourists that come through on Interstate 50 and enjoy being able to take um, a few moments out of their time of travel and come here and look at some of the, the old history that exists. So the next time you're here in Eureka, please stop by the Eureka Sentinel Museum. Eureka, Nevada is oh so close, but a world away.